Welcome to another OCD recovery YouTube video. I thought I would come on here. I know it's midnight uh, right now, but I thought I would come on here and get a video in. Um, I was a bit tired and I thought now's not the time to do a video, but I don't have much time a lot of the, most of the time. So if I don't sort of go for it, it never gets done. And that brings me on to the first point about, you see a lot in the mental health community and in the world now on social media, talking about burnout, okay? And it's one of those things where you've got like two completely opposite views. You've got these sort of gurus on TikTok and YouTube saying like, work all day, get up at 4 a.m. Absolutely ridiculous. Like you don't need to be doing that and people will be burning out if they're barely sleeping at all, like, and just working all day. That's not to say that there's any, if you've got a sleep fear, you're not gonna die from not sleeping. But if you're drinking four cans of Red Bull and sleeping three hours a night, uh, that ain't the best way to go. Um, so with this burnout situation, um, peop, it, it's, re, it, it, it's like with tra working out, right? With working out, I used to be very concerned about overtraining at some points, and it never really initially. When I was doing the, when I was when 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 I, when I was doing a lot of weight training, realistically, between the age of about sixteen to twenty three, it sounds a bit extreme, but people who who train in any sport at high level have this kind of mentality. But it, it sounds mad outside of it, but like. I didn't care if I got injured or if I literally died in the gym. I just wanted to do it and I was obsessed by it and I would just give everything to it. And that's how it felt. And, you know, I was doing it for sort of six times a week for for six or seven years. I owned a gym. Um, it was my whole life. I was really into fitness. And so that's just how it was. But then I became a bit concerned with OCD and about overtraining and become a bit obsessed about overtraining and trying to get the right balance and not overdoing it. And I got ill a lot of times through training too much, eating too much, all these different things. So I had to learn about balance. Now, today... You see so much talk about sort of burnout in the workplace, over, so much about burnout and uh, overtraining. Let's be realistic. Most people aren't overtraining, okay? Uh, most people definitely, most people definitely aren't overtraining. Um, mo like, say, for example, today. Now, this um, most times I'm working out in the gym maybe four, five times a week. Today, I worked out three times in a day. Now, that is high for me. I wouldn't normally do that. But they were short workouts. Why? Because I like the feeling I get from workouts. They were short. I just put them in throughout the day and I really enjoyed it. I trained today for the good feeling I get from it and just the getting my body moving experience, which is good for health. And because I'm sitting down a lot, doing a lot of work on the computer, I find it's a great thing to do and it breaks up my day. Now, I won't be keeping a habit of three, time, three times a day working out, but it feels, it's if I was at my time where I was obsessed about overtraining, I certainly wouldn't do that, okay? That wasn't the same muscle group three times. It was just, it was just working out for the sake of keeping healthy, keeping fit and, and feeling good. And if I was obsessed about the overtraining, I would have avoided something like that. Now, if it's the same with burnout in the workplace, you hear all the time, burnout, burnout, be careful of burnout, danger of burnout. Most people aren't burnt out. Most people are anxious. Most people are stressed. That ain't burnout. Like people come in all the time that uh, I've got to stop work now. I need to cut this down. Rarely do I see many OCD cases ever where the person can't work at all, unless it's like completely consuming with contamination OCD or something which is actually limiting their going into the workplace. But realistically, rarely ever. But I see countless people saying, oh, take time now, a month off work, come back into it gradually. And that's actually the opposite it's avoidance it's usually not needed of course in certain situations where someone's going in they're so stressed they can barely even function a little bit of time off to build again yes but realistically we are usually able with help to keep going uh, along and burnout is this fear people think oh my god i'm too stressed oh my god it's too much i've got too many jobs at work i'm gonna burn out and get really bad like realistically burnout you, you, if somebody comes in, they're like, I'm so stressed. You could just change their perception and they don't feel stressed a lot of the time because it's things like, I can't handle this. This is too much. I'm never going to get out of this cycle. Now, you say, for example, 
like, let me just show you, for example, see, I've started this video now. I'm instantly starting to feel more energetic straight away. Now, I'm five minutes into this video. At the beginning of this video, I didn't feel like that. I didn't really want to come on and do a video tonight. But that's how it's a habit. It's like if I put music on in the living room and then I go to get some weights out and do some weight training, I think... I think at first, as soon as the music comes on, I associate it with working out. So then I get into the mood to work out. It's the same as brushing your teeth. If you take days off uh, only brushing your teeth once, then that becomes a habit. All our days have made up habits, like the book, The Power Habit, a great book. And it's, we don't realise how much that, play, that plays a part. And that's so key when it comes to this sort of overworking fear. Uh, because, of course, there's a balance. But... We think like our limit is, is, is like here and anywhere near that, the stress and anxiety, it's too unbearable and we know it's going to be the worst thing ever and I, uh, we're just about to burn out. But it's like if you were competing for triathlon, first you'd run or for a marathon or whatever and then you think I can't go anymore and then you learn more and you learn more and you can do more and more. I'm not saying to push yourself to the absolute brink, but I'm saying that if you went across general media and everything where it's all talked about burnout all the time, most people are definitely not burnt out. Most people think, I can't handle this much more, a mental block caused by your beliefs and perspectives held at the time, and uh, I feel too stressed, this is, the, 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 I, 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 I can barely sleep, fear of sleep, uh, feeling stressed because of the belief. So it's a sequence of events caused usually by beliefs and perspectives causing that emotional uh, response, which then leads the person to become scared of burnout. And with anxiety, then that's fear of being anxious, fear of being stressed. Then they can feel like burnout's coming on a lot earlier. All variations of that, because it's so easy to become scared of those sensations. And then you've got these other sort of ridiculous characters on TikTok, like I was saying, that say, like, get up at 4 a.m., work all day, have coffee, sleeps for wimps. This is just junk. This is designed for a sort of real uh, hyped up, uh, TikTok followers where people are like, yeah, that's what I need to do. That'll solve all my problems. Seven days a week, three hours sleep, two Red Bulls in the morning. That's how I'd know. If the most successful people in the world were the hardest workers, uh, you would see, you would see people who have got no choice but to work hard in many poor parts of the world where they were literally working all day long, coming out of poverty. That doesn't happen. It's not completely about hard work. You can work so hard at one thing. If it's not in the, your, your formula in your business or or whatever you're doing is in the right way same as an athlete and ath there's so many athletes that work harder than the guy who wins but it's just because he's got better genetics and he's tactically better for whatever reason it, hard work doesn't equal like we have got this sort of mantra in culture uh, it, it, where it's like hard work and you can achieve anything well you, you can't you're, you're limited by genes you're limited by uh, IQ you're limited by uh, many different factors uh, of course persistence and uh, being proactive overrides many and if you're focused you can really change things and but you're but there are there are limits okay there's there's going to be limits um you could have worked as hard as you wanted uh on um on developing certain software for the computer in uh 30, 40, 30 years ago, uh, but you're not going to advance at the speed that it's going to advance today because of how technology is already advanced. So there's things in position that would speed you up and you could only advance at the speed that technology is already advancing. So you can't do that in your, you, 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 there are limits to what, you, what you're going to do, okay? There's going to be limits to what you're going to do. Um, and I think that's very important because I get sent so many videos by people who follow me saying, like, what do you think of this guy who says, like, just think anything and you can have it? I mean, it's complete crap. Uh, they like to sell things like that, all this law of attraction stuff. Think anything and you can have it, like the secret book. Great in terms of mentality. And look, I'm a strong believer in all this stuff. Work very hard, uh, adapt, be proactive. You can achieve so many things. Of course you can. But you can't achieve everything. Uh, if you could just sort of think your way out of problems, a child with cancer would just think themselves better. It doesn't work. It sells books. It's popular in celebrity hype culture because they're in the winning seat because they've won and so say they're a winning tennis player or runner or whatever. They can say, oh, yeah, the secret is what got me there. Yeah, but you don't see the other thousand people that also believed in the secret. It didn't get them there. They're the ones that won because of all the genetic factors and all the other parts that all came into play. Uh, now, I'm going a bit off tangent. So, um, so I think that's key 
to remember in terms of burnout, perspectives of that, uh, fear of stress, fear of anxiety. Now, that wasn't what I was actually going to come on to talk about today. Uh, I was going to talk about uh, acceptance because there was a lot of questions about acceptance uh, coming in. Um, and on, on the questions that I put out today about do you want to you, you ask me any questions? And the most popular question is how do I do acceptance? What do I do with acceptance? And all this stuff. And we've got an acceptance webinar coming up that's going to cover that in detail. Um, and so I will cover that briefly now. Um, I've done lots of videos on acceptance in, in great detail and, and obviously all our one-to-one -one sessions and webinars tend to cover unconditional self-acceptance, life acceptance and other acceptance to some degree as well as the books on the reading list by Albert Ellis, How to Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable and The Myth of Self-Esteem. Great starting parts for the acceptance journey. But I think it's important to just remember, and I'm not gonna go into a great detail in this particular video now on what is acceptance and all the parts on it because I've covered that quite extensively in other videos if you look on this YouTube channel. But I wanted to cover what the problem is with how people view acceptance. People tend to view it as a doing, like if I just do this, 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 I'll accept. It's not a doing like that. People come in and they think, can I have a blueprint and accept? No, it's a transitional state you're learning to see things differently and give up the internal resistance. So it's a transition through perspective, through perspectives that leads to acceptance being an embodied internal state. So that's what happens. Now, let me give you an example. If I had a glass of red wine and there's a gray carpet over there and it's a quite, it's a pretty nice carpet. I wouldn't want to spill, spill red wine on it. But if I spilt red wine on it, I'd be anxious a bit right? I'd be, I'd be anxious, anxious a bit because I'm rational. I think, oh, I don't want to spill red wine on that carpet because I'm going to have to replace it. Uh, but I wouldn't be as anxious as someone who's got an irrational belief of, oh my God, that, that, that if something goes on that carpet, that would be ruined. Then people might judge me or I have to throw it out and, and, and then I have to replace it. And that would be terrifying because they're just generally irrational uh, because they've never done any work on thinking, or you can just picture somebody who's particularly irrational about the house then they could be really anxious over that. Or then you could have someone who doesn't care about it, just thinks, oh, don't worry, I'll wash it out, no problem. Or the, the, the carpet could be one they're about to throw out so they don't care, okay? But if it was a glass of water, I wouldn't be anxious. Why? Because I know out of water is not gonna make any difference. Now, that internal feeling to if it was a glass of water versus to a red wine is a different sensation. I don't care if it's water, I care a bit if it's wine. So I'd feel internal control and a bit of anxiety for wine, but not so for water. Now that's what we're learning to do in relation to our OCD fears, thoughts and that are coming in. We're learning to bring that down from the top fear, down, 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 till we don't care about it the same degree. We view it as water, we're still with this. But it's important to differentiate here. That's what you're trying to do in terms of bringing down the fear and the internal control. But that analogy doesn't work for this part in the sense that acceptance isn't agreement. If you watch Kirsty's video on what acceptance is agreement, you'd still be concerned. So I'd be concerned about what he does in, he does in this way. I'd still be concerned about the red wine on the carpet, but I wouldn't be anxious and terrified that it happened. But I would be if I was the temperament of the other person who the beliefs of the other person with, in relation to the carpet, I would be very anxious, okay? So it shows that our beliefs, because I have the beliefs of, oh, it doesn't matter, it's not the end of the world, I wouldn't have chronic anxiety or be highly anxious about it. I'd still be concerned I wouldn't want red wine on the carpet. And that's what we're learning to do. When we've got our fears like fear of uh, anything, health, OCD, fear of losing our partner, whatever, it tends to be jacked right up and OCD's sort of riding high at the top of the list of things for us to be concerned about in life, like get up, go to work, do this. It's like, no, 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 this needs to be 100% focused on all the time. This is top of the list. Remember this, this, you can't relax because of this. And that's what it's doing. And we're learning to bring that down the stacker. That's what we're doing, down down how important it is immediately. That doesn't mean you're not gonna have concern. Like, I could accept that I could get cancer in the future. It doesn't mean I want cancer. I would ex I can accept I would have it, but I don't agree, I don't want it. There's no, there's not agreement. But then you've also got to remember with all of it, OCD is slippery, anxiety, which is gonna try and get in from every way. If you then say like, oh my God, but what if I do agree? Well, it's like someone was saying today, they were saying, but what if I can't accept at the moment? You've got to learn to accept you can't accept at the moment. You've got to learn to accept even if you agreed. So that is what unconditional self-acceptance. It's a release, an internal willingness to allow anything. 
That doesn't mean that you're going to go and do it. People think, oh my God, if I do that, then I'm just going to do, do, do something dangerous, jump off a balcony or hurt someone. No, you're not, because you genuinely are concerned about that. And it's going to feel like you're not concerned about that. But you've got to be internally willing to allow, to accept uncertainty and any possibility. And that's what you're learning to do. And OCD is always going to happen. But what if, what if, what if, and backdoor spikes and all sorts of things. And we'll cover that in great detail in the webinar. The acceptance webinar is going to go into a huge amount of detail about backdoor spikes, unconditional self-life, other acceptance, accepting sensations in relation to physical anxiety, all the fears, uh, harm OCD, POCD, uh, false memory, real event, and how acceptance gets under all of that in relation to my journey, in relation to Nick's journey, we'll be speaking there as well. And just great detail on the chronic guilt and the chronic anxiety that lingers away that we all know too well what that feels like. And, um, and important to, to, to cover, it's like people often say, oh, yeah, but you, 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 I, I, I've read a book that says you can just leave uh, OCD there with uh, mindfulness and uh, letting thoughts pass. Uh, yes, there are books that talk about that, many books on OCD. But you ask yourself, are you feeling better from doing that? right? Because realistically, today, we have started to realise now, and I've been raising awareness of this for the last 10 to 13 years, is, is the fact that OCD don't release that easily. You can't just relabel a thought, move on, reattribute it, whatever, and move on, like so many books spoke about for years and years and years. Now we're seeing, no, that is not the case. You've got to learn to be able to often go into the content, reduce the fear, become more, work towards acceptance, change your relationship with it. Of course, when you're further along the recovery journey, you don't need to go into all these fears and acceptance and everything. You can leave them to pass. But when it's latched and you're completely fused to it and you can't see any other way and it feels as real as it can get, Trust me, and you know, it doesn't release that easily, okay? Chronic guilt persists for years and years in the background for me, just 24 hours a day, hum, in the background, not releasing. And the same with chronic anxiety, and the same for so many people with OCD and anxiety. Chronic severe OCD don't release that easily. It feels latched, it feels as real as possible, and until you start chipping away and breaking down those irrational beliefs and learning to wear it like an uncomfortable coat, uncertainty, all that stuff as well, mindfulness, learning to bring it along. You don't have to do mindfulness, but all of the stuff helps just chip away at it bit by bit. But the key components that you will usually find on recovery is you know if you're still feeling anxious and you're still feeling guilty, there is a reason. You're terrified of something, you've got conditional self-acceptance, I can't accept myself if dot, 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 I can't accept the world if dot, 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 and those are the keys. I've been working with OCD recovery for a decade, and I can tell you that of all the thousands of people that we've spoken to, you always find that laying the foundations for unconditional self-life and other acceptance and picking away those irrational beliefs, building a great life structure, all those elements that come in uh, through life, through a genuine philosophy change of life, learning to see things rationally, realistic as they are, it does wonders for OCD and it gets under it a hell of a lot more than trying to leave it there because I kidded myself for years leaving it there, saying, I'll just leave it there, it will go, you know, it's just a case of time. How many people in forums are like that all the time? Oh yeah, just leave it there, I'm fine. They all reiterate, it, reiterate the same thing and most of them are stuck in there, like stuck one week, feeling a bit better the next week, stuck again. And that's exactly how it goes because it's not robust recovery, a phrase that I coined to describe that state of where you've got internal, long-term peace, where you're not being sort of, thrown left and right by setbacks and very high triggered scenarios because your your irrational beliefs aren't dictating how you uh, aren't controlling how you're going through your life and and that's key and I, I can really can't highlight enough the importance of learning about acceptance learning about rational thinking learning about unconditional self-life and other acceptance you should be taught in the schooling school system it would prevent so many lost lives and so much anger and people ending up in jail and everything because you learn to see things peacefully. You learn to become an observer of your thoughts. You learn to see things rationally. You're not dictated by anger and strong, overpowering, chronic emotions. Uh, and that's what happens when we're in those irrational cycles. We all know too well in OCD, all that hijacked, strong, chronic guilt and chronic anxiety dictating the course of our day. Guys, 
I will be back on here in the next couple of days uh, covering different topics on OCD. Um, and uh, I will, yeah, I'll, I'll probably come on and do some of these late ones as well because when I get on here, I've always got loads to say about OCD because uh, obviously I'm very passionate about what, what we do here. And uh, when I was stuck for so many years in the past, all the things that I remember where I was stuck and all the things that I learned to change and want to help you guys uh, do the same so you're not in a position of just that chronic anxiety and chronic guilt uh, dictating your day. Um, and, and that's how you do it. We, we change OCD by coming on here and doing these lots of these free resources, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and so on, so that you can learn to break down those anxious cycles or guilt cycles or whatever, shame cycles, um, which you can do and you can put into practice. And it takes time, it takes persistence, it takes understanding. Uh, it's not a quick fix, but it's quicker than you think, and it's certainly not rocket science. And that's what we're here to help you do. Uh, so guys, yeah, if you want to come to the acceptance webinar, that's going to be jam-packed with loads of information all about this. And I will see you guys there, or if not, on the next Instagram, um, on the next YouTube video. All right, guys, take it easy. See you later.